Hey. Okay, guys. There we go. No viewers yet, but that's okay. Uh, let's see if some people get in here, Matt. We have had technical difficulties <laughs> on this uh, Monday. I apologize, guys. Uh, me and Matt have been out fishing for the day. We just went and ate some Mexican food, got our bellies full, and take 5,000. We are now live here from Kentucky Lake Outdoors. And, guys, in the flesh here, uh, Matt Allen from TacticalBassin.com. If you don't know about uh, his YouTube channel, him and Tim Little, California guys, uh, run this channel dedicated to helping you catch not just fish, but the biggest fish of your life. And I hooked a jank this morning on Lake X right off the bat and thought, man, it's double digit day. Uh, and Matt, we actually caught a ton of good fish. We jacked them up today. That was fun. What was really cool is I actually got to see uh tim or excuse me matt how did i forget that matt jack him up using the technique i watched him talk about in a video probably a month <laughs> ago and saw it with my own eyes and uh all i'm going to say is you need to go watch uh the lipless uh rattle baits uh tip video lipless crankbaits is that it yeah and uh pay very special attention when he talks about a lv 500 <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Fluke Master? Good to see you in here. Gene, we are just talking about What's you, man. You got to come up to Lake X with us. Uh, thank you guys for the birthday wishes. I did turn 32, but I feel like I'm really 23. But uh, after holding up all those four to six pounders today, I, I need to get in the gym. <laughs> but uh, Matt, introduce yourself to everybody here on uh, uh, the show. Uh, for those who don't know, know you, tell them what you're about and uh, how kind of tactical bass informed. For sure. Thank you guys. Uh, like you said, I'm Matt Allen. My partner's Tim Little. Together we own Tactical Bassin. Uh, it's a website and a YouTube channel. But basically what it is, the way it got started uh, was just a way to give back to the fishing community. Uh, we're both very blessed to get to fish quite a bit. Um, have, have caught some, some great fish over the years. And uh, years ago... There's a lot of misinformation in the fishing industry. Absolutely, absolutely. And, uh, you know, we saw that, and we decided, for better or worse, whether somebody agreed with us or not, we were going to tell the truth as we saw it. Uh, and it, it has grown uh, tremendously, way beyond what we ever thought it would be. We were just trying to give back, and it's, it's really exploded, and it's amazing. And that's really all it's about, is just teaching how to catch fish, how to catch big ones, uh, ways that work out there that also work here absolutely that's, that's what it's about yeah and that's kind of why uh, i really like matt and tim uh i know I, I call myself a bait guru a bait man whatever you want to call it and that was kind of a play off a joke a lake series guy but these guys are the real deal and they do the same stuff i do they study each bait uh, they study each technique and they refine it and me and matt had a good talk today and it's so personally gratifying uh, when somebody watches my show or watches their video or anything we do and they say, hey, I remember that and I went out to my local lake and I caught my personal best or I had one of the best days I ever had, that's why we do it. And, you know, we're having a blast with it and it's awesome how just these little live videos have grown so much and I feel honored just to have Matt come out here. And, and also, I mean, we went to Lake X and, and we had a blast. <laughs> and my hands are really sore and it's probably one of the best birthday presents i got i do want to say uh hello to my little man brooks if he's watching i'll be home soon we'll celebrate my birthday and i love you and i love my little girl but uh we'll get into this and matt one thing uh i'm gonna do i'm gonna try to read the comments and if we have any questions guys feel free to ask matt for sure um ryan McQuest says just want to say you're probably got the best most informative videos on youtube I've learned a lot from you guys. Keep it up. Thank you, man. Keep Appreciate shooting videos because Ryan likes to order lots of cool baits. <laughs> but uh, so Matt's really famous for uh, a few things, but glide baits and swim baits are probably something most guys associate with tactical bass. And, and Matt, let's start off with your money bait, the River to Sea S Waver. What makes it so good? How to use it? And tell everyone when they get on tackle freaks or tackle warehouse what color they need to order so the s waiver for those of you that aren't familiar you know there's a couple sizes uh, 
that's a, a bait that over the years we've, we've shot a ton of videos about, caught a ton of fish on. Uh, it's a glide bait, so it's a giant swim bait, but it's very, very easy to fish. There's a method to it. There's definitely a right way and a wrong way, but it's not complicated. Uh, it's a slow roll, and we've got videos on how to do it, but it's a slow roll combined with twitches to cause reaction strikes. So you get the drawing power of a giant bait. You know, a big bait's pull fish across great distance, uh, but it will also trigger. You can, uh, you can literally get a fish that's just following, that's just curious. They can have a core reaction just like a jerk bait, but to a giant bait and catch monster fish that, that aren't dumb, but don't have a choice. They make a mistake. Absolutely. And that's a, that's good. You said that I actually had a question. I hate to interrupt that. Yeah. Uh, Joe Reynolds says question about swim baits. I've been throwing the BBZ series slow sinkers, but bass follow it, but not commit. Is there something I am doing wrong? You know, right off the bat, I would say no. You know, not being on the lake with you, it's hard to say. But in general, big bass follow baits. The bigger the bait, the farther they will follow. So look at it as a positive. What's happening is that fish is showing you where it lives. It's giving itself up. Now you know where it's at. When you have better conditions, you can come back and try same bait or a different bait to get that fish to react. If it continues to happen, Maybe you're doing something wrong, but that's not where I would start. That bait is doing its job at showing you those fish. Yeah, that's one thing I tell a lot of guys that come in the store and they see the high dollar uh, bull shad, the, the ice slides, the S waivers, and talk about, uh, well, I would never spend that kind of money on a bait. And I said, would you spend $50 if I told you that bait would show you every five pounder within a hundred yard stretch? Because a lot of times you don't catch all these fish but it will definitely show you what's living there, especially when the water's clear. Uh, I know springtime, they like to, if they're near a bedding area, it seems like they really show up. Yeah, absolutely. It just pulls them out of the woodwork. Now we did have a question or two here. We'll back up a little bit. Uh, first, uh, David Newcomb wants to know your setup for the S waiver. I know you're a big Shimano G Loomis guy, but. Yeah, there's, um... Essentially what you want is you want a slower rod than you would expect. So we're using swim bait rods, uh, but you want a slow action. So like a uh, Dobbins 806 is an example is a, is a rod that's a true swim bait rod, but it's moderate. So it's almost like a giant crankbait rod. That up. whole rod will load up when you set the hook. You're really bowing like six or seven feet of rod. And that's the key with that glide bait because it's a heavy bait. The fish can throw it, but at the end of the day, you know, it's only a one-aught treble. Like, it's big, but it's not giant. Mm -hmm. It's it's essentially a crankbait once you're hooked up. Yeah. Uh, so you want kind of that crossover rod. You don't want a pool cue like you do for some swim baits. Got a lot of questions coming in, and uh, I am going to try to sum a few up into one question. Uh, I do know uh, our friend Gene Jensen, Fluke Master, and Gene, I still got your decal on the back of my truck. Uh, as you know, I've been a fan of yours long before YouTube. Of all your videos, what is your favorite? <laughs> well, thank you, man. I really appreciate that. Um, man, what's my favorite? I think probably my favorite is the S Waiver 200 video of all, of all the videos, just because of the memories of those fish. It was. I don't know what was wrong with us. We were so juiced. We were boat flipping fish that we never should have been boat flipping. Oh, the dude's awesome. Somehow they didn't break off. I mean, it was, it was just, I, the video's cool, but the memories of each one of those catches are cool too. And I, I really enjoy that. I'll video. tell you one of my favorite tactical bass and videos, and this is old school, is look up tactical bass and lunker punker. <laughs> and when I found out what a lunker punker was, and seeing Matt catching these giant fish on this huge. I was like, this is the biggest spook I've ever seen. And Man, it's old school it footage, too. and they crushed it, and it was awesome. Uh, let's get into some more questions. I did have a few I can remember. Um, do you have a follow-up bait to the S waiver? Um, and also, um, what? Uh, when do, do you throw a glide in dirty water? And what's the coldest water temperature you'll throw a glide oh, bait those in? are all good questions. Follow-up bait, typically I don't. Uh, I'll usually leave and come back and try and get that fish to commit uh, but if i were in a time crunch probably your best follow-up bait is a big sanko like a seven inch sanko pitch it back and and try and get them going back to wherever they came from that's probably your most effective bait 
but it's still not a, a really high percentage thing. Mm -hmm. So you're, if you have the time, you know, if you're not in crunch time in a tournament, if you have the time to leave and let that fish reposition and try her again, that's your better bet. Guys, I do want to interrupt. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and hit a share. We've got 135 live viewers right now and climbing. Totally awesome, guys. Thank you for so much of the love. We'll get to some more questions. We're, Matt's going to spill the guts tonight. Uh, <laughs> let's see here. I'm just scrolling back. Uh, answer that. Says, Should I go up and swim bait size if I'm getting followers? Uh, I go to use cranks in that same area, and I best kill those baits in same or close to same colors. And the BB one size is what you use in cranks. I use five XD and six XD. So it sounds like you're seeing the fish you're catching. You're coming back with a crankbait, which is kind of what we talked about. You'll see a lot of these fish yeah, come back they're, they're catching on themselves up, and then yeah. you're catching them. All right, Andrew, good question. Y'all use braid to fluoro and everything. I actually seen braid to mono several times today. Mm -hmm. Please tell us what knot you use and how many feet of leader you use. Great question. I was going to ask him myself. That's a really good question. Uh, when we're fishing braid to leader, we're typically running 8 to 12 feet a leader on a big bait. Uh, it's a little different for other things, but for the swim bait, 8 to 12 foot. We do truly reel it up into the reel. I'm not worried about stopping short of the reel. Uh, it's just never been a problem. Connection knot, I use a blood knot, but it's a modified blood knot, so it's nine loops each direction. Uh, it's a large knot, but it's very strong, holds extremely well, uh, just doesn't fail. Now, do you guys, uh, do you got a video on your blood knot? You tie? Yeah, I've got a couple of them. So if you got any questions, guys, if you'll go to Tactical Bass and subscribe to this channel and then go back to the video logs, you'll find a lot of this stuff. Yeah. We're gonna keep going through the questions, guys. Try to go it fast, but not too fast. Uh, let's see here. Got to go, go. My Buka sucks. Couldn't agree more, Gene. <laughs> I'm fixing to show the knot of bullshit. I'm really going to ruin his day. Uh, how do you fish slow sink swim baits in deep water? When should you switch to a fast sink? That's a great question. That is a good question. A slow sink bait is a patience game. There's, there's not an easy way around it. It's, it's putting that bait out and just reading a book. <laughs> you yeah. got, you got to wait. Uh, and then you fish them slow and methodically. You can fish glide baits really deep. You can fish slow sinking soft baits really deep. Uh, and it is very effective. But it's effective if the fish are up off the bottom. If those fish suck down tight to the bottom, mm -hmm. there's no reason to be going through that. Go to a fast sinking bait, go to a big soft bait, and put it on the bottom and just grind it through them. Don't go through that headache. Yeah, yeah that's a, pretty much what we did today. That's exactly what we Where we were fishing today, you could graft these bass, and if you're on Kentucky Lake, you'd be like, oh boy, it's fixing to happen. <laughs> and they just, you literally had to creep everything down there. We were using uh, just a Kitek 4.8 mm -hmm. uh, on an underspin, and I, I was using this bait right here. That thing caught them too. And it did catch them good. First time I used this, uh, I'm gonna show you what it is here. I'm gonna rig it up. This 4.8 uh, Scottsboro Tackle. Uh, ST swimmer and this sucker jacks some fish up we might have some GoPro footage. Uh, we had a rough down the batteries um, <laughs> I mean I catch a like seven and a half pounder like third cast in the morning, but not a bad start It wasn't a bad start thought we were gonna train wreck them uh, But you could you'd had to really creep that underspin and you'd kind of film nip it at it And if you burned it real quick and killed it, they would absolutely crush it. I mean my line jumped once what like a foot and a half Oh, dude, he clocked it and Hey, it was fun. That's that. It was one of the funnest <laughs> bots I've been on. So let's go back to some more questions uh, here. We got lots of questions, lots of viewers, guys. Thanks for the love. If you're new to this page, go ahead and give it a like. And if you haven't uh, liked Tactical Bass, and make sure you do it. Thank you. Let's see. Oh, somebody did ask temperature. Yeah, what about the, the, the temperature of water for those glides? You know... Glide will work in cold water because it, it is a triggering bait. It's like a jerk bait or a liftless. Mm -hmm. It's a bait that causes fish to react. You can, I mean, what do we have today? We started with 49 degree water and I got bit Correct. right off the bat on a glide bait. Uh, the magic number with a swim bait for me, and I couldn't even tell you why per se, but I could tell you that over the years it's been consistent. When I have 40 degree water, they'll eat it. No good. When I have 39 degree water, it's over. Wow. It's just light switch, over. Uh, 40 degrees and up, all the way up to hot water, they'll eat a big bait. 
that's awesome. So that should give you Tennessee River guys a lot of uh, confidence. Uh, you know, guys put the swim baits away, single swim baits away a lot here when that water gets below 50 degrees. And I can tell you today they were eating it up in 49 degree water. Absolutely. Uh, Michael Kaufman, uh, first off, Michael, hope you're uh, recovering uh, from everything. I've been praying for you. Uh, what swim bait do you recommend in heavy current areas? Uh, you're going to go with a traditional, like I'm, I normally fish something on a jig head, or are you going to go with a hard bait in heavy current? It depends on if you're trying to stay down. If you're, if you're just fishing fast moving water, but it's shallow, uh, you know, glide, a, a fast moving bait, like a bull shed, anything like that will work just fine. But if you are trying to get down and hold bottom, I'm absolutely going to a jig head bait. You know, a Bastrix or a Kytec or a, a bait like that, where you can really get down and bang bottom. Yeah, and if you really like uh, jig head swim baits, paddle tail swim baits, and stuff like that, uh, make sure you check out uh, Dirty Jigs, uh, Matt Allen swim bait head. Uh, I'll show it to you right here. Uh, I believe this is it. That is it. And it's got this nice keeper on here. It is perfect for Kytex, Bastrix styles, uh, anything soft, the STC swim bait. Uh, even the trash fish, which I'm fixing to show you. Um, I'll have these on TackleFreaks.com pretty soon. Got them ordered. Awesome. Got a few in the store. Uh, even got a really small size, you know, for you A-rig guys. Mm -hmm. But uh, this isn't going to be a selling show. It's all information. So let's get some more questions here. Uh, what size leader length do you use for square bills? Uh, it depends on the size of square bill, but I'm typically square billing on 10 to 15 pounds, depending on size of the bait and how much cover I'm in. And then same thing, we run long leaders, you know, 10 to 12 foot on a square bill. And the reason for that long leader, specifically with that square bill, is you're in such shallow water that the line is going to pass in front of that fish before the bait does. It's not like you're vertical fishing where you just come across a fish. Your, your line is literally going to pass and then a bait. So I want enough line in there that my connection knots up above them. They don't see that braid go by. They just see a bait show up. Yeah. So Carlos asks an interesting question. Do you think a depth's 145 silent killer will get smoked in Catalina Island fishing for calico bass? <laughs> Very specific. I like the question, Carlos. I am not a calico guy. That said, absolutely. That's They'll right. murder that thing. That's right. Great answer. Uh, going on here, so Clint Gray said he ordered a tactical bass and hoodie over a week ago. Can't wait to get it. Awesome. <laughs> Good man. Thank you. All right. Uh, talking about LG soft swim bait, I lost my 8-inch hood today. Snagged it at the bottom. Can't get it out. 40 bucks. Find me in the water. Shaking my head. We have all been there. Been there, man. Been there so many times. Good lure retriever. Last Makes all the difference. Last question. I'm buying a Dobbins to throw a HUD 68 and 8 inch 12 rate of fall Huddlestons. Would you go a 806 or 807 if you had one rod for both? 807. 807. The, the 806 is definitely a better rod for the 68, uh, but it's no comparison for an 8 inch. And the 8 inch is the bait that's heavier and the fish are more likely to spit. Prepare for the 8 inch and you'll be fine for both. Awesome answer. Love them Dobbins rods. Richard Cobb, when are big swim bait style weight baits most effective? That's great. Uh, That's a good question. Do we got a you got a weight bait over there so we can we show them what they he means? I'm sure there's some baits. Look, in look at this box of swim baits. This is crazy. There's a slammer. Matt's going to show you MS Slammer, one of the most popular weight swim baits probably out there. Yeah. That's a 9-inch MS Slammer. It's definitely the most economical of the weight baits and it flat catches fish. I mean, we we tell people to throw the slammer all the time because if you're trying to get into the swim bait game, it's a bait you can afford. Yeah. Uh, and it flat catches fish. They work, and I hate to say year round, but they, they work year round. Um, I have caught wake bait fish in January in 40 degree water. It's a, it's a size thing again. The bait is so large and so slow moving. And when it's rolling that big V wake out on the surface, the presence is there. Uh, the fish are willing to rise to it if it's going slow. But prime time, pre-spawn is amazing. Mm -hmm. Post-spawn is amazing. Summer nights are amazing. It's a fantastic night bait. Uh, but that pre-spawn, post-spawn is really game time. But don't be afraid to throw it in cold water. Yeah, I know a lot of guys, uh, they like throwing those wake baits at night, especially the rat-type baits. Mm -hmm. I've seen a lot of guys up north in California. They go at night with these big, like, Johnny Rats, the new Bull Rat. On that sucker at night and catching some double digit bass. They eat them. 
A Chad Carr here in northern Michigan. What size swim bait should I use for smallies? My answer would be something small like a 2.8 or 3.8 Kitek or a Bastrix. Uh, your experience up north with swim baits, is it similar or different? Uh, they will eat small baits, but they will eat a big bait too. Uh, I mean, we were just a couple weeks ago catching them up there on 4.8 Kitek. I don't think we caught them on anything really, really big, but I've caught them up there before on the S waiver, no problem, on a 168. No, 168, it's, it's only that's, a size 2 hook. That's not really any bigger than a 6XD if you think about it. Yeah, absolutely not. They have no problem eating it. Uh, you get big presentation. Yeah, same with a 4.8 Kitek. Mm -hmm. It's it's big presentation, but at the end of the day, that thing's not very big. They can choke that thing. It's yeah, no problem. For my experience here on Tennessee River, especially with Kentucky Lake, where we have a pretty decent population of big smallmouth in that four to six pound range. I've caught them on a 10 XD. They've been caught on a bullshed. Those are big baits. And believe it or not, a 10 XD is a, is a very big bait. Mm -hmm. And those smallmouth, they don't discriminate. When they're hungry, they find a way, they find a way to eat it. You know, those small smallies, I've caught small, smallmouth on the 8-inch Huddleston bare jig hook, and they choke it. Mm -hmm. And you get them with a jig hook, and you can barely get it out because you can't even get a finger in there around that bait to work with it. They're killers, man. Smallmouth are killers. It it almost doesn't matter. William Knowles says, what is your top two baits that would use on Kentucky Lake this time of year if you're looking for a true giant? Well, since I fish Kentucky all the time, yeah, I have no earthly idea. No, but I mean, if if I were coming out here blind, which is what I'm doing out here right now, uh, your water temps are cooling. You've got fish that I'm sure are chasing bait, but you've got your your true dominant giant fish that are just going mm -hmm. to they're just going to hold. They're not going to go run after bait, so you're gonna you're gonna want a slow bottom fish. Uh, the big hud, which is something that I don't think a lot of people do out here, uh, and I talk about it a lot, but I mean. We have nothing to do with that company, but it's a bait that flat catches fish, so we talk about it all the time. Mm -hmm. The other one would be that big trash fish. That's a bait that's super slow. The reason why these two baits matter is they work at an almost dead speed, so that's the big trash fish. Uh, both of them almost at a standstill. I mean, I cannot stress how slow we turn a handle. It's like a 10 or 15 second handle turn on the reel with a five to one reel both baits at that speed they still stay upright they're not even kicking but they stay upright and every time they touch something every time they hit a rock then they kick and the fish just sit there and stare at them and they they commit they go for it yeah I really haven't wanted matt to talk about the trash fish for a while <laughs> but they made a video and i got them in here at kentucky lake outdoors and shout out to bino at little creeper baits which is a great name little creeper because creep them i've caught some giant bass on this and i i've kind of kept it a secret for a while and had somebody else show me this and i told them i'd keep it a secret but man when tactical bass and let it out it just <laughs> and this is the big eight inch trash fish and matt is 100 percent right the slower you can move this swim bait and this is this color is just like off-white or something like that the better it is and these are unbelievably soft if you've got any of the babes or ffjs they're even softer than that yeah uh, but it's all about this tail and it just in the life-like fins it's so realistic in the water but if you're a guy that puts a swim bait by the boat and you bring it by it, you, it looks terrible it looks fast. terrible but when you go slow and creep it it just it looks like a shad creeping on the bottom and uh, I've been throwing it on like a 7.6 heavy rod, uh, and I rig it up Kentucky Lake style with a jig head. Now, Matt, mm -hmm. he actually inserts the jig head into the head. There's a little pocket here, and if you can see that, you can put your jig head way right. up here, and this pocket holds the hook. Or you can beast hook it if you're going to fish around on vegetation, that kind of stuff. Right. And that's, that's Tim's bait. I mean, that's his baby. He throws that thing... 10 to 1 on me because it's it's magic when that guy throws that thing he gets it done and then this is a uh this is a six inch trash fish and i have this rig kentucky lake style right here mm -hmm. this is just a five aught half ounce revenge style uh head um and i'm just gonna creep this bait right here this is man i really wish we went and talked about this this, this is <laughs> believe it or not this is won a lot of money on kentucky lake uh 
You and, see and some of those, knows it. and nobody knows it till right now. Till right now, two hundred and thirty-one people, as a matter of fact, two hundred thirty-one people right. now know the secret. <laughs> uh, but they'll also be on tacklefreaks.com here at the end of the week. Uh, let's move on to some more questions. Uh, best swim bait made hands down is the True Rass five point five perfect head. Oh. Uh, Man, I hate to ever call anything the best hands down because it's kind of like that kid at high school that you could think whips everybody's ass. Well, I promise somebody out there can whip his ass. So, <laughs> anyway, can't wait to get out and throw the big baits, Larry Lanes. Man, I love throwing some big baits. What's uh, going on, man? Thanks, Ross, for joining. Glad to see you on here. He had taught me a lot today. Let's see. Do you like the Bone S waiver or do you prefer to stick to more realistic colors? Man, I would not say that very many of them are super realistic colors. Uh, but the light trout, if I could only have one color, it would be the light trout. And it looks more like a banana than it does a trout. But they eat it. You've got to understand, I live on Clear Lake out in California. There's a lot of misinformation about that lake. We don't have trout. Uh, we're just like out here, man. We, it's primarily shad. We've got a bait fish called a hitch, which looks a lot like a golden shiner. doesn't matter. They eat that big yellow banana, man. It's everywhere we go in the country. If I could only have one color, that's the one. It doesn't matter. What you know, I'm it's funny you say that on Kentucky Lake, the best color 10XD 66D, in my opinion, ever made is Chartreuse Powder Blue. The only difference between this and Chartreuse Powder Blue is the back. Those fish don't, probably don't care about these dots at all. Right. They'll definitely eat this bait, you know, on the Tennessee River. Yeah, the only thing the dots do is break up that pattern. People get worried about trout color swim baits in places that don't have trout. It's a non-issue. All it does is just, it's not, it's no longer a big solid object, right? There's just some definition there. That's all it is. All right, Joe, he, Joe Reynolds wants to know your thoughts on a Livingston Viper B6 and B8 series. Want to throw but need a heavier rod since it's, since it's a very large profile bait. You know, big bass kill big baits, but don't get huge because stupid. <laughs> you know, I'm I'm not familiar with either bait. I I honestly haven't fished either one. Uh, I've seen them though. I've seen their profile. Size wise, you're absolutely right. Uh, I try to tell people use the gear you've got, get used to it. But swim baiting is kind of that exception to the rule. If you're really going to make a run at throwing swim baits. You need a proper swim bait rod because this is the one place where you're going to do it all right. You're going to put in the time. You're going to put in the money. You're going to put in the effort. Mm -hmm. You're going to hook that giant fish. He's going to come up and spit it right away because it's on the wrong rod. And you don't want that to happen because it is such a heavy bait. They can shake them. So getting that right rod, getting that right action is critical. So someone says they just jumped in. And they may have missed it, but they want to know what exactly we're referring to referring to as glide baits and i'm going to show some examples i'll give you i always tell people this every glide bait is a swim bait but not every swim bait is a glide bait correct yeah and uh, this is probably one of the most famous ones and most expensive ones this is uh the hinkle shad these are the ones you see go for uh four hundred dollars plus uh, matt brought this this one with this it's a little beat up it's caught a few uh, <laughs> this is the famous one on the working class zero video where he caught the 10 or 13 pounder uh, by the dock um, you can see it's got a very lifelike profile it's got a hinge uh, this bait's not going to work like a bull shed where you reel it in and it get, swims a real tight pattern right. it's meant to actually hence the name of the s waivers make an s shaped arc uh, some guys are really good at making these spin backwards so that's the you know, that's the Hinkle Shad, and I'll have Matt talk about that. Um, you know, the S Waver here, this is a great glide bait we already touched on. Uh, this is uh, a Gancraft, which is really, really super popular. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I've got some that's never been before seen, ever. <laughs> this really is not a Bull Shad. That really is it. Coming soon from Bull Shad Swim Baits. This is one of only 100 that ever made it out. And that's all you're going to see of it right there. That is one of the most best glide baits ever. That's and a good bait. We're done uh, with the not a bull shad. So anyway, uh, <laughs> Matt, was I kind of right on that the the difference between a swim bait and a glide bait? Yeah, essentially. I mean, a glide bait is a single joint hard bait. 
You know, it's uh, no lip. It's it's just that true slow S motion. Anything beyond that, you're giving to it. You're twitching that rod. You're doing things to get it to move. Uh, but it's a very slow mechanical action. Richards Rodriguez, best swim bait for the California Delta and how to fish it. Oh man. I mean, I hate to keep talking about the waiver. I love the waiver out there. I love the slammer out there. Uh, they eat them all. I love any of your the osprey, the killing osprey out there. But essentially, you're just you're trying to fish current, right? The delta we've got good flow. This time of year, the fish get on those current points at feed, so you're just trying to fish current breaks, current edges. That's all there is to it. It's a river system. They line up. They'll stack up in those eddies and shoot straight up to eat that bait. Wow. Uh, what's the deal with John Strawbridge? Uh, I don't know. We we don't know. That guy's crazy. He's done for. Clint Gray, I need six inch trash fish as well. Tacklefreaks.com, end of the week. Uh, I'll have them up there. If you can't stand it, uh, go to Tackle Warehouse. But if you go to Tackle Warehouse, guys, do me a favor. Go to tacticalbassin.com, click their t t uh, tac Tackle Warehouse link. It really helps them out a whole lot. So Thanks, if, man. if you can't order from Tackle Freaks, click that uh, uh, TW link on Tactical Bassin. Make sure you take care of these guys. All right, let's keep on going, going, going. Matt Allen, swim bait heads are money. Yes, they are. <laughs> Thank you. What kind of swim bait to throw when the lakes are turning over? And would you pair a Zodius medium heavy with the Stratic CI4 3000? Yeah, I would. Might as well. Yeah, that's a good I pairing. Mean, the reel's really light. The rod's really light. That's Not to mention they match. Correct. Like that matters, but they do. You they can never good. go wrong with a Stratic and a Zodius. Let's see. Money Poe is the best lure retriever. I don't know what Jared Caesar had in his boat. That was pretty good. It was like an antique Abu, <laughs> and the line was pretty antique, too. Caesar, get out of the background. Uh, Chris Holtzclaw, <laughs> tell me to tell you that. Let's see. We need some swim baits for smallies up north. Uh, we went over that earlier. Uh, I really honestly think the same stuff that works for largemouth works for smallmouth. 100%. I think maybe guys, and this is my theory, I think guys really feel like smallmouth have to have a smaller bait. But, man, I'm telling you, even on Kentucky Lake, you catch big smallmouth on big spooks, big whopper ploppers, big crankbaits. Yep. I've caught them on a magnum spoon. Uh, those bigger fish just eat bigger meals. Absolutely. I mean, a smallmouth, it's got a smaller mouth, and that's what everybody focuses on, but it's a bigger predator. It's a bigger predator than a largemouth. They hunt better, they're more effective, they're smarter. It doesn't matter. They will find a way to eat a big bait. All right, Sean Russell says, about to buy my first swim bait. I live in North Texas. What advice do you have? For your first swim bait, you don't need the most expensive bait out there. You know, you just need to get in and see if you enjoy the style of fishing. Get a six to seven inch bait that's big enough to have drawing power. Don't go smaller than that because you're not going to see the actual effect of a swim bait six to seven inch bait you'll have drawing power you can pull fish to you even if they don't need it you're going to see them they're going to come up boat side uh that's the way to go and you can also do that on your traditional tackle then if you if you like what you're seeing mm -hmm. you need to commit get proper swim bait gear get some bigger bait so you can see the full effect of what's going on absolutely and tim and matt got plenty of videos on uh, the tactical bass and youtube channel tons of gearing video their holiday gearing uh holiday gear buyer's guide's been awesome i watch those and man I, I watch it i get a lot of information for myself and other people i really trust their opinions and if they say this rod is not what you want for a football jig uh i believe it and you know what's funny let's i want to talk about you know some of the east coast west coast stuff when we're talking on the phone matt you know a month ago and you're talking about man i love the dirty jigs football jig because it doesn't put a 3x tuna hook in it and people call me crazy. I'm like, dude, you're talking exactly what I do. I do not like a big heavy hook. And then you say, I don't like a big broom handle. I like to have a pretty moderate, I want the rod to load up. And I'm thinking, dude, you're, you're, you're talking to me. That's all I want is a football right. jig fisherman. And it's crazy how he's in California. I'm here on, you know, Tennessee River. And it really lines up. And I, I feel like guys that, I'm not saying I'm one of them, that, can line those things up uh, as far as fishermen wise um, 
guys that catch big fish do some similar stuff. I'm not saying I catch a lot of them, but it's crazy how there's that crossover. And I've really only known Matt for like eight months to a year, other just communicating on Facebook. And and we don't talk a lot, but when we talk, it's, you know, similar thoughts on bass tricks, similar thoughts on rods, reels, crankbaits. Um, It's pretty cool, but there are some differences. Matt's the guy. He hurt my feelings last night. I was talking about a rod for swim bait, and I said, yeah, I like that rod, so when they buy it, it loads up. And he looks at me and like, you're the worst. Because <laughs> Matt says, when they bite a swim bait, especially a hollow belly, soft plastic swim baits, jack them. As soon as you feel that thump, jack them. And you'll always hook up. And I always had bad luck at it. But you know what? Today I took his advice. And you jacked them. And I jacked them. And... uh Sometimes it pays off to try something a little different, or maybe it was something you had bad experience with before, which was me. When they would bite, I'd miss them, so I just let them eat it. Today, when they touched it, man, I set the hook. Awesome success, but yeah. it's pretty cool to see the contrast of east and west, and and you know, really, something I want to ask you: um, How do you see more techniques from the west evolving down here? It's, it's like swim baits. Stuff goes to California, it gets popular, it leaks onto the Tennessee River system, and if it wins a tournament here, dude, it blows up. It's the craziest thing. It's like, you know, the whole east-west thing as a whole, it's overblown. A bass is a bass. Yep. But a bass is a bass everywhere. So we run into it all the time because we are in California. People, they listen to what we have to say, and then they go, man, I wish I lived out there. Uh, and that's just... It's just not the case. This stuff works everywhere. We travel a ton. Tim and I both come back all the time, all over the country, and the stuff works. I mean, today, the stuff we were doing is stuff that I would be doing if I was at home. Uh, a bass is a bass. That said, trending. Baits trend both directions, mm -hmm. right? We had the Whopper Plopper forever ago. Nobody out here paid any attention. Mm -hmm. I mean, we threw it for years before anyone out here had ever heard of it. Uh, but it goes the other way too, you know. We were slow on the uptake on the A rig, uh, swim baits. Obviously, it was out there forever before anybody even took it seriously. Mm. Uh, so you want to pay attention to trends because people in other parts of the country are doing things differently than you. And a bass is a bass. If if they're successful, two thousand miles away catching a largemouth, and you are fishing for a largemouth, mm -hmm. it will work. It doesn't matter which way it's going. I always say this: bass brain, a brain on a bass is about this big. And if you got a brain this big, you've already got an advantage right from the start. <laughs> right. So, Amaran says, so I lost my HUD in my lake. The lake is not big, twelve acres. Does the big bass know how my HUD looks already and won't bite a HUD anymore? Not at all. Not at all. You'll you'll be good, man. Just tie another one on and let it rip. Let's see here. I'm gonna we're gonna answer a few more questions. And then we're going to jump off here because we had a long day uh, out on the lake. Let's see here. Have you ever fished Table Rock Lake? I have not. I have not, but it's on the short list. Ask me that again in a year or so. Nathan Martin wants to know, how much did uh, Caesar charge me uh, to be here at the store? <laughs> Mike Gerard wants to know your favorite Tiny Clash model. Tiny Clash model. I like the floater. That's a good bait. Um, although, I don't know that I have a favorite. <laughs> Those baits are so strange, man. You can do so many different things with them, it almost doesn't matter. Uh, I mean, I change tails out on all of them. I fiddle with them a lot. Uh, it almost doesn't matter. Brian Hayden wants to know, do you still use hollow bellies much, and when is the difference? I personally still do. Uh, I'm trying to really experiment with different things, like the trash fish i've experimented i know what it's going to do just don't talk about it that scottsboro is probably my favorite you know hand local poor yeah, non-hollow belly I, I like that thing uh, th and they're good people too um makes a big difference um bass tricks are kind of i love you to death bruce but i'm just gonna be really honest and y'all know i'm brutally honest uh bass tricks used to be my favorite and dear to my heart, but man, for some reason, they're not swimming all perfect out of the package, but that doesn't mean they're bad baits. There's something going on there we gotta figure out and make bass tricks great again. But Zoom Swimmer's good. Paddle Tails are 
Hollow bellies are still really popular. Oh, they're they're awesome. I would say for me, the difference is what are people throwing in your lake? You know, we smash them on a Kitek, but the more people pick up a Kitek, the more I pick a Bastrix back up or pick up something else. Uh, don't throw what the entire population of fishermen around you is throwing. Both both styles work. They're very different. One rocks. One's got that big wide tail kick. Both are effective. Throw the one that no one else is throwing. Absolutely. Just going to get a few more questions here. Uh, how does someone make fishing with Matt Allen on vacation happen? <laughs> Message Tactical Bassins page. That's a good start. Book a guide trip. Come on out. Aaron Balls. Uh, he wants to know uh, uh, A-Rig blades or no blades? I don't throw an A-Rig unless it has blades, personally. <laughs> I throw both. Throw one if they don't eat it, throw the other. Would you fish a big glide bait on a Kentucky Lake ledge? I'm going to say yes, and that is because, and I want to address this real quick. When someone says they're ledge fishing, that does not mean they're fishing 15, 20 foot deep. Even on the north ends, I fish ledges that might be six foot on top, eight foot on the bottom, and eight foot is really not that deep at all. 20 foot's really not that deep. Right. You could pull glide bait fish a long way, 100% throw it. Yeah, absolutely, because it's, it's all about drawing power. Right. See, I'm learning. I'm catching on, guys. <laughs> uh, new Kitek 6.8 jig head, slow rolled bottom and cold water, killing it for me. That is awesome, Cannon. Nice. Love to hear that. JoJo Wall says, throw the babe. <laughs> it's true. JoJo caught an 814 on, on the babe. Good job, man. Uh, best swim bait for the Delta and where? How do you fish it? We covered that one just a little bit ago. Uh, what hook for the big trash fish? Uh, 10 on owner beast. Uh, if you want a uh, weedless version, I personally, if I have been creeping on Kentucky late with the 8 aught uh, big hammer, one ounce head, uh, or any one ounce style swim bait head, the key to it though is you've got to fish this bait slow. Yeah. And the other one's that Blade Runner, it's a 6 aught insert. What's the best swim bait for fishing deep grass around Gizzard Shed? Man, that new big Kitek's not a bad way to go. That thing thumps. They'll eat that thing. Yeah, uh, you know, guys, the Bull Shad is one of the best, most popular Gizzard Shad imitators out there. And been a lot of big fish caught on the Bull Shad around grass, ledges, stuff like that. And Mike Book is an awesome dude, you know. But just don't let his head get way too big. You know, and if you happen to have one of the only not a bull sheds around, they'll eat that one too. Yeah. Just uh, saying. We're going to put that on uh, for we're auction. auction that, we're going right? to auction yeah. the not a bull shed yeah. off. Uh, we're giving Eric Cooper first dibs on it. <laughs> I think it starts at 400. But uh, what rod would you throw an Osprey with? Great question. You're an Osprey guy. That's a really good question. Uh, depends on the size, but in general, you're talking about a jig hook bait and your weight forward. So that's a bait that's really easy for a fish to throw. I'm going to hit them hard on a big rod. Uh, I mean, we're talking that particular bait, pool cue. That's a bait where it's really critical that you smash that jig hook home and you do not let up. You literally don't want that fish to turn its head away from you during the fight. It is a full-on grind, no head turn, no fight. Just get in End it as soon as possible because if they get a head shake in it's a weight forward bait it's going to want to pull itself out they'll they'll spit that thing easy that that's good information there and i'll tell you something similar and we're fixing to wrap this up when you talk about you got to end it uh, a lot of guys ask me man i keep losing so many fish on this ben parker magnum spoon if you've watched the show before and ben's talked about that big spoon you know what he says you use the stiffest rod you can and you just crank on them and you get them to the boat don't be trying to run I can alley back and forth. You just crank on them and get them in. Get it over with. All right, guys. Just a few more questions. Going to wrap this up. Uh, how did, well do you all think these big swim baits would work here in Texas or on Lake Sam Rayburn or Toledo Bend? I think they smash there every day already. Absolutely. And I sent a lot of them out there. Yep. Let's see. Colin Trash Fish will be on at the end of this week. I'm taking a few day hiatus on vacation. Good for you. Yeah, really need that. I appreciate that, Matt. Uh, what's the recommended jig head for that trash fish? I answered that uh, um, in the past. Any type of 8 aught to revenge style, big hammer style uh, jig head. 
Uh, you can stuff it in there. Go on Matt's video on YouTube and look up trash fish. Uh, and he's got some awesome ways there to uh, rig it. Uh, what's up, Brandon Marshall? Gene, I really appreciate. Uh, go ahead, tell all the secrets, because uh, I'm going to watch your videos and tell more <laughs> secrets. How about that? And, uh, yeah, I can't really trash talk you this year. Georgia beat our breaks off. So did Kentucky. <laughs> Uh, let's go through here. See if we got any more. What do you think about the bait smith magnums mat? That thing's awesome. I mean, it's an expensive bait, so it's it's up to you whether or not it's worth it. Uh, but you know, you're living in a part of the world where the Huddleston has has caught a lot of fish, and those fish are smart. The bait smith is the same action, same profile, but it's not the same, and that makes all the difference. Man, uh, just from watching Matt and seeing other guys throw the HUD. And I haven't, but one of these days I'm going to make a trip out there to California, somewhere where they bite that thing really well. And I, I'm Kentucky excited Lake. to throw that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I probably need to have some on Kentucky <laughs> Lake. All right, uh, just a few more questions here. No problem, Paul. I'll be here Saturday. Uh be great to see you again. Uh, what swim bait would you use on a power plant lake, mid to late winter, 45 to 50 degrees? I'm going to say that's an open book right there. It is an open book. All of them. I mean, it, it's truly, it's up to you, man. That's prime water, prime conditions. It's prime time. You can do whatever you want. That's that's when you throw a big bait. Uh, let's see. I got to get this thing caught up. What is the best color in a trash fish and what size? I personally think anything shad pattern, a match your forge in the lake, but they will eat this big 8-inch one. Yeah, they sure will. What about the FMJ? Uh, Matt Allen should say Jaints on a tactical bass and video. Uh, I think that's probably coming. I, th I ain't saying that. I think uh, that's that close might, as we're getting. That might be the title of the late X, Lake X video: How to Catch <laughs> Jaints. All right, uh, let's see. I know in videos you have always said to get a fast tip action, but should I do a seven six or eight foot, and what gear ratio reel? Uh, that longer rod is definitely going to benefit you. And if you have the choice, go with an 8-footer. Uh, typically, big bait fishing, slower gear ratio is key. Uh, that 5 to 1, so that you can just slow crawl. And more importantly, when you hook a giant, you're not going to seize that reel up. Because again, you're not fighting them, you're dragging them. And that's a very different thing. What you can do on a 7 to 1 or an 8 to 1 when you're fighting a fish is different than trying to put the screws to them and force their head. So go with a slow gear ratio. Guys, my phone just gave me an alert that I've got 5% battery left. So we're going to have to jump off here. If you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Hit the share button. If you really, really like it, let Matt know so he can come back here to Kentucky Lake. Uh, maybe this spring we'll do some different fishing. Some Maybe Matt can do a glide bait lesson for me out on Kentucky Lake. We'll get Tim out here to turn him loose on that trash fish. We could get the high water and uh, I'll show him how to work the bully wall in the bushes. Oh, man, I'm game. Actually, I'm going to get skunked really, really bad. <laughs> but, uh, Matt, I appreciate it, man. I had Anytime. a lot of fun with you today. And thank you very much for joining the Bateman Show. And, uh, guys, uh, if you all have questions uh, that we didn't get to answer, I'll go back. I'll stay up late tonight answer the ones I can. Awesome. And uh, you all gave Matt a lot of good information for some more videos. For sure. And uh, check out the photo we're fixing to upload. I'm going to run a contest, and I'm going to give away an S waiver autographed by Matt, a pack of his Matt Allen Dirty Jigs swim bait heads, and uh, Scottsboro Tackle Company nice. sent some swim baits to give away. So uh, y'all look forward to that giveaway. I'll put it up tomorrow morning. And uh, guys, thank you very much for joining. Thanks for the birthday wishes, and uh, keep chunking and winding. Thank you, guys.